Hi, I'm Otto Penzler, and I'm at the Mysterious Bookshop and talking about mysteries and collecting. Today, um, I'm going to talk about somebody who's really, really hard to collect, Georges Simenon. Um, one of the reasons he's so hard to collect is there are so many books, hundreds, literally hundreds. And um, I think most people know him for his Inspector Maigret series, uh, of which there are at least 75 novels and, uh, and lots of short stories. But beyond that, he wrote under various pseudonyms um, and took very seriously a lot of his other work, which were psychological suspense, and they're very, very dark. <clears throat> his uh, evocation of Paris, especially in the Maigret series, is unrivaled. The character uh, became so successful that uh, Maigret actually in France was every bit as popular as Sherlock Holmes was in England. Um, he started out as a writing at, at a very young age and uh, worked for a newspaper, went to, cour went to courtrooms and, and covered the crime scene uh, where he got his ideas for, for several stories. He, uh, he started writing immediately and was very able to write very quickly. Uh, it took him roughly a week to write a novel. And when he finished the novel, he would put it away and then come back to it and spend two or three days tweaking it, editing it, and fine-tuning it. Uh, as a result, he was writing several books a month and continued that for quite a few years. Uh, his total output is probably in the neighborhood of about 300 novels, as well as other writing, short stories, and other things. So I'm going to show you some uh, very early Maigrays. The they were not very pop. He was not very successful in America and England for uh, early in his career. Uh, the, the books were very short, and uh, they, he only found success when the publishers put two books, uh, two novels, into a single volume. And uh, this is this is how it looks. This is the American edition, the first American edition, and this was published by Harcourt Brace, <clears throat> and Harcourt was pretty good about putting first American edition on the copyright page. They were, they skipped sometimes, it was, uh, it was kind of hard to tell, but he stayed with Harcourt uh, for virtually his entire career, uh, stayed very loyal to them. Uh, the early books are fairly uh, uh, kind of hard to find and get kind of expensive. This one's a uh, hundred and forty-five dollars. But before that, before he was at Harcourt, he he was at uh, several small publishers uh, like Cavici Freed, for example. Uh, and here's the death of Monsieur Gaillet, and there is nothing on the copyright page to suggest that it's a, a first edition or anything else. Kovici Fried would say second printing if it was. Uh, these are very scarce books. This is, this is very early, it's 1932, and it really wasn't until the late 30s and 40s when he became successful with these. The, uh, the, the true uh, first editions in the English language were published in England. Uh, by Rutledge, and uh, here's an example, Maigret Abroad. Un unfortunately, he's got a badly torn jacket, but fine copies of these Rutledge editions uh, tend to go into the thousands of dollars. This one, because of the bad tear on the jacket, is only 300, uh, only 300, still pretty expensive. Uh, but Rutledge was pretty good by pointing out first published on the copyright page and uh, later printings would show second printing or third printing. Um, I have a couple of other early uh, Rutledge editions, but without jacket. Uh, the Patience of May Gray was selected for the Haycraft Queen, Corner as a Haycraft Queen cornerstone. 
And again, on the, on the copyright page, it very clearly says first publish. Um, this was uh, the Haycraft list, if, in case you don't know, <clears throat> is a list of all the greatest books in the history of crime fiction. Uh, and the list was compiled in the, uh, in the 40s. And um, Howard Haycraft, who was the head of a, a large publishing company and a great mystery um, scholar and fan, uh, combined with Ellery Queen, who also, in addition to writing so many uh, famous and, and great books uh, in the genre, uh, also was uh, the half, half of the Ellery Queen uh, duo who wrote those books, Frederick Danae, also was a great scholar as well as a collector, and they made this list of about 160 books that were the, the greatest in the history of the genre. And The Patience of Maigret uh, is, uh, it was, it was selected. It's the first uh, of the Maigret books where there were two were collected in one volume, and they're among his best books. Uh, later books, were st as I mentioned, were still being published by Harcourt. Uh, here's a May Gray. But they get a little more complicated to tell first editions when they're later. The later books, I'm going to say roughly from the 60s on. Uh, look on the copyright page. I'll show you here. Down at the bottom. They don't have a number sequence the way most publishers do. They have letters. And uh, unfortunately, they were very erratic. Sometimes it, uh, it didn't start with the letter A, even though the, the one, a, a, a numeral line or a, a letter line beginning with B could be a first edition. And it's, it's very difficult to tell. Um, let me see if this one has a, a better example of that. No, it does not. <laughs> um, but here, you see, they'll, they'll be, there's a B here, not an A, uh, but this is a first edition. How do you tell? You have to know the books. You just have to pay attention. Um, and uh, I, I don't have a single answer because it's too, it's too erratic. Um, he also did a collection, he did three collections of short stories, um, which were only translated very recently. This is the French edition, um, Les Troisième Mystères, but he also wrote one called uh, The Thirteen Enigmas, and the 13 culprits. The 13 culprits was selected as a Queen's Quorum title, which is a list of, again, Frederick Danae's, Ellery Queen's list, of the 106 greatest short story collections ever written. Um, these are quite scarce to find in the original bindings like this. They, uh, they're from 1932. I think they were all published in, in 1932. And uh, to find them in the original wrappers like this is very, very difficult. Uh, and, and as a result, expensive. It's, this is $350 for a book that you can't read unless you, unless you speak French. He had an interesting life. Um, among other things uh, for which he is famous, here's, here's his uh, biography, a biography. There have been several as well. His, he, he also wrote an autobiography which is very, very fat. Uh, and one of the things that is revealed in the biography is that he claimed to have had sex with 10,000 women uh, from the time he was 13. His wife actually said, oh, no, that's not true. It's only 1,200. <laughs> one of which is reputed to have been his daughter. Yeah, kind of creepy. Uh, kind of creepy? <laughs> it's very creepy. Um, anyway, that's George Simenon. And thanks for watching. <laughs>